can you always count on? They're always there when you're feeling down. Ready to draw a smile and remove that frown. They make a bad day so much better. Especially if you share toys and play games together. I'm with you, Officer Poppy Holmes. I think we're moving in the wrong direction. You might be right, Officer Poppy Holmes. I can see footsteps in the opposite direction. Officer Sherlock Fluffs! I think someone is after me. Run, Officer! Run! and search for Poppy, but he couldn't find her anywhere. Hey there, Fluffy. What? How come you're here? I thought you'd eventually come home. What happened to your walkie-talkie? It's not working. But we just got it. I know! I was looking everywhere for you. Aw, Fluffsy, were you worried about me? Stop it! We need to fix this thing. Do you have any idea how? Hello! You're the smart one. <sighs> but I'm not much into technology. You know that. At least take a look at it. I did, before you came. I got nothing, really. Should we go over to Mr. Fox? I think we should. Let me change first. Hello. Hey. Mr. Fox, Poppy broke her walkie-talkie. I so did not. Don't fight, you two. Show me your walkie-talkie. Maybe I'll be able to fix it. Here. But I promise I didn't break it. I'll go to the workshop and see what's wrong with it. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Sure. Why else would it stop working? But I didn't! Well, I kind of think you did. You're unbelievable! working just fine. I told you. Well, it wasn't before. I tried it. I know it wasn't, but now it is. See, Poppy, you did break it. And Mr. Fox fixed it. It wasn't broken, Fluffs. It just ran out of batteries. I'm sorry, Pops. Never mind. I was worried about you, though. I know. I have a wonderful brother. Brothers and sisters may fight every now and then. But at the end of the day, they're still best friends. Beatrice was a little energetic bee. She wakes up early, 
eats her breakfast and checks on her honey. Then she goes out to collect some nectar. Hmm, that smells great. I'll take some from here. Wow, that looks fresh. Here's my favorite type. And so, she went collecting all the nectar she needed. And when she was all done, she went back home. But as Beatrice came closer and closer, she could see that someone had been to the hive. Oh no! My honey! It's all gone! Who could have done this? Beatrice looked right and left, but no one was there. Sadly weeping with grief, she went to the place where she might find relief. Oh, Beatrice! How have you been? Mr. Fox! Beatrice, what happened? Someone stole my honey and destroyed my hive! Who would do such a horrible thing? I have no idea! I was out collecting nectar, and when I came back, I found... Calm down now, calm down! I don't know what I should do! Mr. Fox felt sorry for Beatrice. He kept thinking of a way to prevent this from happening again. Aha! I got it! You know who did this? No, but I can prevent this from happening again. Really? Really? Come with me. At once, Mr. Fox ran to his workshop. He grabbed some steel, some wooden plates, and his toolbox. He then hopped into his car with Beatrice by his side and drove away. Oh! See? I told you! It's a complete disaster! You were right! But don't worry, everything will be okay now! Mr. Fox started to work. He got the wooden plates and built a box out of them, which he put on the tree branch. Then he surrounded the box with steel. He made sure the nails went in properly and made a door for little Beatrice. Now all done! Wow! It's amazing! Thank you, Mr. Fox! There! Take this too! And what's this? This is the key to your hive so no one would enter without your permission. Really? Oh, I can't thank you enough. Don't worry about it, Beatrice. Here, Mr. Fox, this is for you. What's this? It's one of my delicious honey jars. It's the best kind I've got. Oh, you didn't have to. Well, thank you, Beatrice. And as Mr. Fox drove away, he thought that this was the perfect end to the day. Rose stood in front of her painting stand, holding a few colors in her hand. But things weren't going as she planned. Uh, I think I should just paint the pig blue. No, wait. Maybe this will do. Maybe I should just take some of the pink color on my feathers. Working. Maybe I should call Mr. Fox. He might have some clue about what I should do. Hello. Hello, Mr. Fox. It's me, Rose. Oh, hello, Rose. How are you? I'm fine, Mr. Fox, but I do need your help with something. Do you think you could come and meet me? I'm at my usual painting place. Sure, I'll be right there. So, without a moment to lose, Mr. Fox got ready, got into his car, and drove off to where Rose was painting. Oh, Mr. Fox, I'm sure glad you're here. 
I tried everything, but nothing seems to work. What are you trying to do, Rose? Uh, I... I was just trying to get some pink paint, Mr. Fox. I'm not sure that this is the right way to do it, Rose. Well, what should I do? Hmm... Do you have an empty color palette? Of course. So, what colors do you need? I have red, blue, yellow, black, and white. But I still need pink, green, orange, purple, and brown. Let me see. If we take a bit of red and a bit of white, we can make pink. Oh, it's just like magic. How about the other colors? Do you want to try? Why, yes, I would. But which colors do I use? Use your imagination, Rose. Hmm, I want to try red and blue. Okay. Wow, now I can paint my violets purple. Do you want to try again? Sure, this time I'll try red and yellow. Nice, now you have orange. It's beautiful, Mr. Fox, but I'm still missing green. Well, let's see. We still haven't mixed blue and yellow, have we? Right! This is a really cool shade of green. Now you can paint all you want. But, Mr. Fox, what about brown? Right. I almost forgot. Hmm. Let's try orange and blue. Yes, that's it. Oh, I really can't thank you enough, Mr. Fox. Don't worry about it. I really like your painting. You do? Yes, it's quite colorful. Well, thanks to you. Now, whenever you're missing a color, all you have to do is try some together. All the colors that Rose once knew, when mixed together, turn to something new. Pink, purple, orange and green. Something she had never seen. It was a beautiful sunny day. Feeling bright and early, Mrs. Sharpie was on her way to work. Good morning, Sharpie. Good morning, Emma. You're looking good today, Sharpie. Thank you. Come in. Good morning, Mrs. Susan. Oh, good morning, Sharpie. Today's gonna be a special day. I hope so, but why? Well, we have more packages that need to be delivered to their owners on time. And there's a special package for the king. I'm on it, Mrs. Susan. After piling them all up, Mrs. Sharpie went to deliver the packages. Here's your package. Thank you, Sharpie. Just in time. Hmm, looks like delivering the next one is gonna take some time. After safely delivering the package to Mr. Camel, Mrs. Sharpie took off to the opposite side of the jungle to deliver a package for Mrs. Deer. Here's your package. Thank you, but why were you late? I waited all morning. Next was Mrs. Bird's package, and that was south of the jungle. That was very tiring for Mrs. Sharpie. Mrs. Bird, Mrs. Bird, here's your package. I thought you weren't coming. Thanks anyway. Next was Spike the Dragon.
here's your package. You know, um, I never thought you'd be late. Oh, no! It's the last package I'm delivering today. I hope the king is not too upset that I'm late. Worried and a little scared, Mrs. Sharpie took off to deliver the last package. She was already late as it is. The last package was intended for the king. And after being all over the jungle, will she be able to make it in time? Here you go, Mr. Timber. This package is for the king. Thank you, Sharpie. But the king was worried and a bit upset. Why? Well, he had to wait all day for this package. You're not usually late, Sharpie. He was very upset. My sincerest apologies. I'll be more careful next time. Mrs. Sharpie was very tired and really upset. Having to deliver packages all over the jungle was no minor task. So, she decided to go to Mr. Fox and ask for his help. Oh, hello, Mrs. Sharpie. How have you been? I'm not good at all, Mr. Fox. You have to help me. What happened? I've got a lot of letters and packages, and I keep flying east and west all over the jungle. This won't do, Mr. Fox. I'm so tired. Oh, Mrs. Sharpie, you do look exhausted. Please come in, and we'll figure this out together. Would you like a cup of hot chocolate? No, I just want to find a solution, Mr. Fox. Okay, tell me what the problem is exactly. I get too much letters, so I fly to deliver them. I find that the first letter should be delivered to the western part of the jungle, so I fly and deliver it, just to find that the next one is in the eastern part of the jungle. And when I fly and deliver it there, I find that the one after it is in the north. And after that, it's west again. And it's all driving me crazy. Calm down, Mrs. Sharpie. There must be a solution to all of this. That's why I came to you. I kept thinking and thinking, but they come in packages. And I must deliver them all in one day. So how can I do that? Don't worry, Mrs. Sharpie. We'll sort this out. Sort? Sort! That's it! Why don't you sort them out from the very beginning, Mrs. Sharpie? What do you mean by sorting them out? I mean, first, you should read the addresses and sort all the letters that should be delivered north together, and those that should be delivered east together, and so on. And then I'd finish all the north letters together, and the east, and then the south, and then the west, right? Precisely! That's a great idea, Mr. Fox. Thank you so much! Wait, where are you going? I have letters to sort out. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Glad I was able to help you, Mrs. Sharpie. Goodbye. Happy with the solution she got, Mrs. Sharpie took off and looked forward to a new day with her new planned plot.